Well, the gridlock in Washington could have a far-reaching impact on public health. This includes members of the military and their families. That is because military hospitals and dental clinics will be canceling primary care appointments and elective procedures. Let's bring in Dr. Manny Alvarez now, Senior Managing Editor of FoxNewsHealth.com. And Dr. Manny, I read your piece on the website, and basically you're saying that the health care system is being harmed by the shutdown. Tell us how. Well, listen, if, if this is a 24-hour, 48-hour event, I think uh, we're not going to see any major uh, problems. However, if this uh, extends into a week or so, then you're going to have uh, some problems with the health system. If you look just at the furlough amount of uh, employees, uh, uh, you know, 50 percent of some agencies, uh, veteran affairs, 4 percent, uh, ultimately, you, you know, you're looking at a, at a health system, especially the VA hospitals, that for years... They have been under a lot of pressure. Uh, we still have uh, long lines of patients waiting for appointments. You know, if you look at the vacancy rates for staff, there's over 30,000 vacancies still that need to be filled in VA hospitals, especially in mental health. So, you know, if you are now are not able to hire people, if you're not able to continue with the buildup of new hospitals or contractors who service hospitals, ultimately this is going to affect potentially the outcome and the care of patients. And you mentioned how these problems could compound over time. Which patients, Dr. Manny, could possibly be uh, most at risk? Well, I, I, look, I, I think that uh, I'm very concerned about mental health. Uh, you know, PTSD, mental health issues are an important core medical service that is under a lot of pressure. We don't have enough psychiatrists, mental health clinics, uh, mental health professionals working for the VA hospital. And this is a subgroup of patients that need uh, immediate attention. I fear for that. I also fear, of course, for the uh, a lot of the uh, veterans and military personnel and their you know and their uh, and their families, right. especially when it comes for uh, elective uh, surgery mm -hmm. or elective procedures. You know, in, in cases of of emergencies, whether you have attrition or you have financial difficulties in a health system, the the first thing that gets put aside is the elective procedures. Right. Uh, primary care hospitals or primary care health clinics. Again, this is an area that uh, is going to potentially get hurt. So, you know, we have to pay attention. At the end of the day, I said, if this is a 48-hour, 72-hour event where the government shuts down, nothing's going to happen, of course, because there's enough uh, oil in the system to keep it going. But if this goes beyond a week or two weeks, then you're asking for trouble, you know, and we're really jeopardizing a system that is just beginning. You know, I think under the, pre uh, under the leadership of the president and the and the government right now with the new secretary, uh, you know, the VA systems are moving in the right direction. But, you know, we have to support it and we have to continue to support it in order for it to become quite efficient. And Dr. Manny, what about this scary flu season? Oh, my God, uh, this is a nightmare, you know, especially here, you know, like in New York and New Jersey, we have thousands of patients that have been admitted to the hospital. Again, the vaccine is about 20 to 30 percent uh, effective. And right now, you know, we're basically saying to people, continue to take the flu vaccine, but do take precautions because there's a lot of infections and people that have chronic medical conditions can really have significant side effects from this flu season. So a couple of things quickly, if you're already exposed to someone who has the flu, is it too late to get the flu shot? And what other uh, protections can you uh, take on besides the flu shot? No, listen, it's never too late to get the flu shot. The peak flu, uh, flu season or the, or the peak of the flu season is in February. So we still have about a month before it could even things can even get wor worse. So you, we still encourage people to get the flu shot. Um, as so far as what you can take to protect yourself, again, hand washing, number one in the hit parade all the time at work, at home, at school. When you come back from outside the subway, wash your hands. And if you are sick, try to sequester yourself and try not not to expose others to the flu. What about wearing the mask if you're sick? <laughs> well, that helps. You know, isolation to some degree works. But again, it's all about getting the flu shot, washing your hands, uh, eating right. If you get sick, you know, support yourself with good hydration and balanced nutrition, and hopefully you can ride it out. Okay, Dr. Manny Alvarez, thank you very much. You got it. Take care.